Hello everybody and welcome to the Chin Up Show. This is episode 12. I love the number 12. You know in the Bible, the number, number 12 is for government and uh, speaks about influence and impact and uh, authority, you know. So today I really believe that the show will do the same. It will impact, it will influence, it will govern, it will uh, be a show of authority where you know, what we say here will help many, many uh, people. Today, I will have the privilege uh, of uh, speaking to my dear friend, Pastor Ignatius, uh, and I will introduce him a little bit more later when he comes on um, later. Uh, but uh, you are going to be really, really blessed by his story, his testimony, and also the work that he's doing, uh, especially among those uh, who struggle with drug addiction and abuse. So we'll get there uh, soon. Uh, but as usual, uh, on behalf of my team and I, I, I would like to take you through uh, a couple of updates. Uh, I usually do that so that those of you who are watching me, you, those of you who know me, uh, even partners and leaders from X Church AYA, uh, and all the different organizations that we're connected with, uh, they can get to know uh, what's been happening. All right. Fantastic. I just heard something in my ear uh, and uh, it sounded like somebody was selling nasi lemak. All right, uh, getting me hungry now. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, something very, very exciting was our um, visit last week uh, to the Putra Jaya International Convention uh, Centre. Why that's uh, really significant is because um, we have been wanting to... Um, secure a venue for our 24th anniversary of Acts Church, which uh, falls on the 25th of February this year. And uh, we were looking at a, a variety of venues, but I felt the Lord put on my heart that uh, we should not just take on any venue, but that He had in His heart and mind a venue that was suitable for us. And this venue, I believe, uh, on God's heart, was a venue that was going to declare uh, what he was about to do in and through our lives and our church and our ministry, not just for this year, but for the years to come. And so, uh, when he led us uh, to think about uh, Putrajaya, uh, we made the call. And the first miracle was that they were available. Uh, the uh, venue was open for us. Uh, to rent, and I think that is actually two miracles in one sentence. Not only is uh, the uh, that particular weekend not taken, uh, but also uh, PICC uh, being probably once upon a time a government uh, place uh, now is open. It's um, it's it's uh, gone into uh, a, a private uh, company uh, management, uh, and uh, so. Uh, the second miracle is that they say, yes, you can. Uh, and they heard that we were a church, an NGO. Uh, and uh, the second miracle was that uh, they gave it to us at an NGO uh, rate. Uh, so uh, we are very, very blessed. Uh, we have confirmed the date, 25th of February. Uh, and uh, it's just really, uh, to me, such uh, a breakthrough uh, and a blessing and also a place, you know, meeting in Putrajaya, for those of you who understand Putrajaya, really is not just a place, a venue, but when you say Putrajaya here in Malaysia, you mean the seat of government, the seat of authority uh, is very, very significant. And I believe uh, the Lord would want us to be there uh, to uh, sing praises and to worship Him from that place, that center of power, uh, and to just, you know, uh, bless Malaysia from that place, uh, speak blessings over our nation from that place, declare uh, God's promises from that place, uh, be able to praise and, and ring out a praise because the Bible says uh, that God inhabits the praises of His people. So I can just imagine God's presence coming upon uh, that place and, and from that place, uh, you know, the presence and the power and the glory of the Lord uh, will be extended. Uh, and expanded uh, from that place uh, to uh, the rest of Malaysia and the world. Uh, so, uh, you know, I believe it's going to be a blessing uh, to Putrajaya and through Putrajaya uh, to everywhere else uh, that uh, Habakkuk uh, 2 
14 uh, promises will happen. Uh, that the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. So that was really, really good. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I just thought I'll bring that update to you because it's a great celebration and uh, we're inviting all our partners and leaders uh, to come. Uh, there will be global leaders that will come also uh, from our Church Plants International uh, and um, it's going to be exciting. It's going to be exciting. Uh, I, I can't even imagine the fullness of what God uh, is about to do. But you know, when God uh, prepares us to do something, is because He's got so much more. And so I am excited. I'm looking forward and I'm, I'm waiting uh, upon the Lord for the so much more that He will do. All right now. Uh, so... Uh, that was on Friday, actually, last Friday. And on Saturday, we had a combined salt. Uh, the first salt, I think, for the year, the new year, 2024. And it was combined. And uh, all our leaders were there. And we were so happy to be able to connect with them. Again, say hi, uh, handshakes, uh, you know, high fives and hugs uh, all around. And uh, sometimes, you know, because we are decentralized for the last one, two years, um, it was so good just to be able to see one another again. Uh, and uh, they gave me the privilege to uh, share and uh, share the word. Uh, and uh, I was glad. Uh, well, a big part of it was just to talk about how God opened the door for us to uh, have our anniversary in Putrajaya. And I think just from sharing that testimony uh, of how we got that, uh, contract, I think, uh, you know, the Lord just took over and uh, I planned to only speak about the Putrajaya thing for about five, 10 minutes. And then I went on to take it on for like 40 minutes, you know, uh, because there was so uh, many truths and principles uh, that could be drawn out of that experience. Um, and uh, so, yeah, it, it went on for about 40, 45 minutes and then uh, I was going to go sit down, right? Because I think altogether it was about an hour max uh, that uh, they gave me to speak and to encourage our leaders. Uh, and so I was going to go sit down and I, I, I looked at the leadership at the front there and they said, no, no, pastor, you got five, ten more minutes. Uh, we want to hear more from you. And so uh, I had prepared a message that was probably... Uh, going to take, if I had finished it, uh, going to take another hour, you know. But I'm going to save uh, a big part of that message maybe for uh, the Ex Leaders Conference, which is coming up uh, also on the 23rd and 24th of uh, February, okay. Uh, and that's another thing I want you all to remember. Pray for us. It's going to be probably our first Ex Leaders Conference, ALC for short. And this year, it um, replaces uh, the APC, which is the ARC X. Uh, I was going to say ARC. Sounds like from Germany. Uh, the ARC. The X uh, Partners Conference won't be on uh, this year. Uh, maybe it will come back next year. But we felt the need to bring all our leaders uh, together, to be on the same page, to have the same mind, same heart, one voice, uh, and uh, one dream, one vision. And, uh, you know, to turn every doubter into a believer uh, because that's what we need uh, to be able to um, walk by faith in the things that God has shown us. And so, you know, if there be anyone who's still uh, having doubts, uh, you know, uh, unbelieving in, 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 in their own way because of things that may have happened in the past, it's time to put that all aside. Amen. It's time to bury that in Jesus' name <laughs> and not see it resurrected. Okay, uh, we need to be able to believe uh, because uh, miracles happen when people believe. Signs and wonders uh, uh, come to pass uh, when people believe. Mountains are removed when people believe. Amen. Praise God. And Jesus continues to teach us and tell us, just believe. Just, I know that you have many questions and, and, and many of them will not be answered this side of eternity. All right, save these questions for Jesus, all right? Uh, he will answer all your questions. But for now, it's not really answer my question, then only I serve time. It's, it's Lord, I lay down. Lord, I set it aside. Lord, I bury my past. 
Lord, you know, uh, let the old man uh, die and let the new man, come on, arise and be resurrected in Jesus' name, all right? Let doubt die and let belief arise. Come on, uh, let uh, faith arise. For we walk not by sight, but by faith. So you might, with your eyes, be seeing a lot of things, looking left, looking right. Oh, this is not done. That's not done my way. I don't like this. I don't like that, okay? We don't want to go by sight. We want to go by faith. Uh, because without faith, it is impossible to please God. So we all want to please God. And so I'm bringing all the leaders together at ALC. Please be praying for us. Please be praying for each other if you're a leader listening to this. Uh, and let's expect God to do something great in our midst and uh, not just do something great to us at the ALC, but uh, do something great and awesome through us. Come on now, X church uh, And so I want to just uh, say to you that uh, the salt at uh, DVCC last Saturday was a great beginning, a great start. I can see a lot more uh, showing uh, even from the disposition from their facial expression, I can show more, I, I can see, I should say, I can see more show of uh, belief, of wanting to step up uh, to the plate and make uh, the difference. All right, praise God. Now, last Sunday, I was at X, X Cheras uh, and uh, I was able to fellowship with them after so long. I think it was more than a year because uh, I went to a, a new hotel, <laughs> which is not so new to them anymore. And so they said, Pastor, you know, we were here since, you know, I don't know when. Uh, and I said it was new. I put it on my Instagram, you know, here at X Cheras new place. <laughs> and I had to put inverted commas. Uh, so not so new, but uh, it was good to see some new faces there. And of course, always good to see some older faces there, familiar faces. Uh, and uh, we, yeah, had a great time. Uh, I preached the word of God. Uh, with all my heart uh, and I preached for about an hour and five minutes. Can you imagine that? Uh, usually it's only 40, 40, 40, 40 45 minutes uh, but uh, it's, it's like this, all right, guys? If I haven't spoken to you for a year, uh, then I'm going to take that one hour, five minutes, uh, okay? I'm going to tell you everything I want to tell you in a year. <laughs> so you should actually be very, very glad uh, that I didn't take five hours. Uh, I could have uh, because there's so much I want to tell you uh, and so much I want to teach you in uh, and through the Word of God. But, uh, yeah, after that, we went for a good meal. Uh, we drove around. You know, this part in Cheras, uh, there's so many cars uh, and so many shops, so many restaurants. Uh, uh, they said, Pastor, are you joining us for lunch? I said, of course. You know, hey, guys, I'm telling you, I don't just like to go to places and to preach. I want a fellowship. I want to spend time with people. I want to, you know, touch base, catch up. Uh, it's people and not just preaching. That's very, very important to me. And so I said, of course, I won't miss it for the world. Uh, and so they took me. Uh, initially, we were supposed to go to uh, uh, some sauna me, you know. Uh, and because Sonia was there, I thought Sonia and Sauna, uh, you know, uh, would go together. Uh, but you know, uh, oh, yeah, I see, uh, upstairs I could see uh, Megan giving me the look like, what are you talking about? Uh, anyway, so um, uh, Sauna, uh, me... Uh, was uh, not available because it was packed out. Partly because of my long preaching, you know. Actually, if I preach, uh, uh, you know, uh, quicker, right? 40 minutes, we would, would have gone to uh, eat lunch 25 minutes earlier. Anyway, we ended up at a place called Nanyang. Nanyang. Uh, and I don't think I've eaten there before, uh, but uh, it looked like it could accommodate us. And we had the longest table, Right? Uh, it's the Last Supper times four. Uh, and uh, it was uh, really, really good. Uh, I ordered a bowl of noodles with luncheon meat. Luncheon meat noodles. How can you say no to that? And it has to, don't forget, uh, the luncheon meat has to be thick. Don't give me all this nonsense about thin ones, okay? Thick ones, thick luncheon meat, okay? If you can get it halal, great. If Otherwise, uh, no, there's no halal luncheon meat. Okay, day. Okay, but the thing is, it was really good, but it was very light. So, you know, I had to eat again at about 3, 4 o'clock. Um, that's my wife's, one of my wife's comfort food. Uh, Maggie me soup with uh, luncheon meat. Thick one, okay? I have to repeat that again. Because so if you're making anything for me, make sure it's thick. Hey, 
See my guys here all looking like they're very hungry like I'm talking about food. Okay. So, um, uh, let me think. Uh, yeah, so it was a great time and uh, I went home uh, and uh, I think there was something on on, on, on Sunday. Can you uh, remember, Shirley, what happened when I went home? Uh, uh, oh, yeah. I think we met uh, Jason and Jessica Martin. Uh, yeah. So, uh, that was... Uh, oh, no, 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 no. That was Saturday. Saturday. So, after we finished all, Jason and Jessica uh, treated us to dinner. It was not supposed to be dinner, no? It was supposed to be some tea, la, you know? Five o'clock tea. And wanted to catch up about ex clang Wanted to catch up about young families. That's right. Jason and Jessica are our young families' uh, leaders. Uh, and also leaders over ex clang And they took me to a place, a new place called Tasty Chapati. Tasty Chapati. And uh, make it stop laughing. And, uh, you know, ah, oh, okay. Actually, no, they didn't, they didn't tell us it was Pastor Sandra's uh, birthday. They told us because it was ketchup. But they did. They did buy some cake from Tasty Chapati. I tell you, I, I don't know why Tasty Chapati sells cake, but no, like, it wasn't from there. I think they bought it from Gula Cakery. Now, all these fellas uh, should be sponsoring this show, you no, know, because I mentioned their names. Uh, but anyway, it was really, really nice touch at the end where they actually bought uh, uh, a couple of cakes, small little tarts, and then they made it into a, uh, a round cake. And we uh, sang for Pastor Sandra. But I want to let you know that Tasty Chapati is actually quite good, you know? Ah, real Indians. Okay? Uh, and, uh, and, they, and, and very tasty. But the funny thing was, when, when, I, when I was uh, giving the, uh, the order... Uh, well, just not just not just me, but uh, Jason Martin also was, you know, like, okay, give me this, give me that, give me this, give me that. And we were asking the man to recommend, uh, what's good? Uh? Uh, he says, oh, you know, uh, bendi, bendi masala, you know, which is actually the okra, okra masala. Oh my word, Lord, hallelujah, help me. And uh, and, and then there was um, things like butter chicken. I think there was butter chicken, but we didn't order lah, okay? We ordered quite a lot. Then you know what? Uh, the, the waiter looked at us and go like, he, he was looking like, you haven't, completed your order. And we look at him like, hey, a lot, already a lot. You know, we looked at him like this, a lot. And then he looked back at us and said, but uh, sir, this place is called Tasty Chapati and you haven't ordered Chapati. And so, uh, we ordered one lah. Okay. Uh, because if you don't order Chapati, the rest is not tasty. Okay. All right. Um, so, uh, that was good. Uh, please go and uh, visit Tasty Chapati. And Tasty Chapati, if you are listening to this, okay, come on. Show me some chapati. All right. Okay, 16 January. Oh, uh, hey, before we go to 16 January, 15 January was a Monday. And guess what? And, and, and this whole week, we're, we're still into the 15 to 19 January period, okay? Uh, and uh, and uh, it's Victory Academy's first week at school. Yay! And I was there on the first day. Actually, Monday is my day off. Okay, nobody be calling me, nobody be visiting me, okay? Uh, <laughs> but usually it's my Monday day off and my mandate with my wife. And we try to rest uh, and we try to, you know, go visit a new cafe or something like that, right? But it was important for me to be there to welcome both students and parents and even teachers back to school, back to school, back to school. And uh, and uh, in the morning, early in the morning, I was already there to open up. Oh, Kenya and Shirley also joined me, you know. Actually, usually Shirley cannot wake up so early, one. Ah, I, every time she wake, wake up so early, I, I pray for her, one. Because sometime in the next few days, she will tell me she has headache and all that. Uh, but I think she's better now. She's better now. She has been healed. But she was also wiser, lah. She will, you know, try to catch up on some rest some other time, Okay. But every time I, I, I was so shocked to see Shirley in the, in the car. I was like, Shirley, you're here because it was so early. It's not, it's, you know, the Shirley, that the early in Shirley is not spelled as E-A-R-L-Y. Okay, so there's no Shirley. Okay, uh, so she's not an early person, but uh, she tries, she tries. And uh, she was there to take photos, videos, and all that for us. And so it was very, very good. Uh, and we are so glad that uh, we got footages uh, of me shaking hands with parents, giving hugs to children. Someone actually wrote in my Facebook and said, don't hug children. Hello! What's going on? Yeah, like, I understand. I understand where you're coming from. Don't simply hug children. 
But these children, you know, they I know them. And I know they are even I'm hugging them in front of their parents, okay? Uh, and uh, they are like my uh, I can't even say children, they are like my grandchildren. Uh, and so uh, we had a great time. Uh, I shook the hands of teachers, blessed them. I said, have a good day, have a great year. Uh, I even met parents at the car park because there's a new car park system uh, that Summit uh, put a, a new boom gate. Uh, they sort of not ready for touch and go yet, not ready for anything except for Visa card. Okay, Visa, you may sponsor me. So Visa uh, card and uh, that's all, you know. And then, you, of course, you can touch. Uh, the boom gate will open. You uh, drop off your children and then you have 15 minutes to get out before they charge you. And so I, I was glad to be there because some parents just parked their car in the middle, didn't know whether to go right, didn't know whether to go left. And so I said, yeah, you can go ahead, taught them how to do it. And for some of them, I even had to stand at the boom gate because when they turned their car, it was so far from the card reader. You know, one father even was going to come down. And you know, if that happens with every car, you know how long the line will be, right? So, you know, I served that day as the extension of the card, all right? Uh, uh, so, you know, I became that. You know how people like use the selfie stick, the, the card stick? I became the stick, okay, that day, hello. And uh, so I was there taking people's cards and tapping for them. Oh, thank you, pastor. Thank you, pastor. They're telling me. And it was a great time. It was a great time. You know, uh, you know how I'm not a businessman and, and I didn't go to business school. But if you want to succeed in anything, just follow the Bible. What does, does the Bible say? Number one, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Do everything out of your love for God. Number two, love your neighbor as yourself. Number three, do unto others what you want others to do unto you. So if I came to school as a parent and it was a new boom gate, I need some instructions. I need some help. I need some guidance. I need some help with that card. Otherwise, I get stuck. Uh, uh, so do unto others what you want others to do unto them. If you can just practice that, you're going to run a really, really good and successful business, okay? Victory Academy is already buzzing now. Uh, our uh, student numbers have increased and almost every week I heard from Juliana, uh, we have new parents wanting to check out our school. Uh, so, uh, you know, I am uh, just so uh, grateful to the Lord uh, for His wisdom, His leading, His guidance, uh, His excitement that He has put on the school is buzzing. And on the second day, uh, Tuesday, I was able to do uh, devotion. Okay, so every Tuesday morning is devotion with the teachers. And I tell you, I really cherish that time. I cherish our teachers. I really do. Uh, and uh, I, the Bible says not only cherish, but nourish. So I think it's important for us to nourish our teachers. And when our teachers are nourished and happy, uh, so will our students. Amen. Uh, and our parents as well. Okay. So uh, that's that. Uh, it was a full uh, Tuesday and uh, we had other uh, meetings like the principal's office meeting, the ex-leaders uh, conference meeting. We also had the hour of prayer, which was uh, awesome. I think um, about 13 to 14 prayers came in. And you think about it, even if I spent three minutes per prayer and I also had worship in between, Alex Martin led us in worship, uh, you know, it takes up the hour like that, like a flash, all right? Okay, I'm going to try to end uh, this uh, update because I re I'm really excited to get on with uh, the interview with uh, Pastor Ignatius. Uh, so let me just have a quick look. Uh, yesterday, uh, Victory Academy again uh, had a full day of activities uh, and we had assembly, we had chapel, we had creative arts because we're going to have a performing arts day, uh, a production day, 16th of August. Uh, so we want all our uh, kids, all our uh, students to be involved uh, with that. So we involved the AYA staff and uh, they were there. We also had clubs uh, being introduced to our school, pickleball, uh, ping pong club, uh, basketball club. Uh, the community outreach club is also called Compassion Club. Uh, we started that. And so uh, I think the students were probably worn out by the end of the day because I was worn out at the end of the day, uh, also teaching uh, the students pickleball. Uh, but uh, it's good because I think students got so much energy, it'd be great to kind of expand that energy and then later on concentrate on studies, right? <laughs> that's, that's good. That's a good strategy. Okay. All right. Later on when we uh, have a, a, a break, which we'll, we'll probably have that break in a minute, uh, exactly one minute from now, uh, uh, we're going to hear a song called Freedom. Uh, and uh, the words and music are by our pastor, Joel VJ, who pastors our church in Melbourne. 
and copyrighted by New Song Music. New Song uh, Music is a ministry that we have in this church, in this ministry. Uh, and uh, Alex Martin heads up uh, New Song Music together with the team. Uh, and so all that is good. And I am now ready for that break. Uh, and when we come back from that break, uh, we will interview our guest today. Oh, oh, oh. 
Okay, welcome back everybody uh, from the break. I hope that you enjoyed uh, the song Freedom uh, by Pastor Joel Vijay. Uh, we here at X Church uh, and AYA have been really, really blessed by that song. Now, let's get on uh, with our interview uh, because I want to give uh, our dear uh, pastor, our, uh, our dear guest today, uh, uh, as much time as we can give him. Uh, so, uh, we are very, very privileged uh, and honoured uh, to have on the show today with us, Pastor Ignatius Wong. Uh, welcome, Pastor Ignatius. Thank you, thank you. Thanks for having me, uh, Pastor Kenneth. Yes, it's our pleasure, our delight. And uh, I know that you have to uh, uh, sacrifice a little bit of your time because you are actually teaching uh, at a school. Uh, I think it's called Heritage School. Yeah. And uh, around this time, you are probably uh, busy doing something. But uh, when we uh, gave uh, the invitation to you to be on the show, you were very, very kind uh, to move around your schedule uh, to be with us. So we thank you. Thank you for that. Welcome. My honor to be here. Fantastic. And <clears throat> I'll never say no to X invitation because, you know, initially 10 years ago, more than 10 years ago when I started my ministry, doing drug awareness prevention and actions has been one of the early church that uh, opened up and given me a platform. I, I, when I started in 2010, a lot of churches turned me down oh. on the topic of drug. Wow. But actions was one of the early church. And uh, I'll say actions is a, one of the selective church that I will never say no. Hey, man. I like hearing <laughs> that, brother. Thank you so much. Okay, let me just uh, say something very quickly about you. Uh, yeah. You had for 21 years uh, been uh, caught up with uh, uh, drug addiction uh, and uh, that 21 years of being in that dark web of uh, drug uh, addiction and abuse, uh, you started since the age of 14. Uh, and then uh, by the grace of God in 2003, Pastor Ignatius, you went uh, through a program in a Christian rehab. Uh, and uh, we want to actually mention that Christian rehab because it did so much for you and so much for so many others. Uh, it's called the Vineyard Keeper Centre in Chemor, um, Ipoh. Yeah. Uh, maybe I will ask you later, uh, Pastor, uh, whether it's still going on uh, and whether other uh, people can still go there for help. But let me just finish off uh, this quick introduction. Uh, it was two years, uh, your program, and in 2005... Uh, obviously, it was a successful uh, program for you because you then accepted God's call to serve as a training staff in that very same uh, rehab center. Uh, and of course, yeah. you began to uh, give biblical training uh, and also counseling support. Then in 2009, uh, you went on and registered uh, yourself in the Bible College of Malaysia, which is BCM for short, and you pursued your theology uh, or theological studies uh, and graduated with a Bachelor of Theology in 2013. Wow, how God can turn a life around. Now, uh, Pastor Ignatius, uh, I want you to go ahead and fill in the blanks uh, before we go into other uh, topics. Just that, just what okay. I just introduced. 21 years, Pastor Ignatius, of drug addiction. You know, there are some parents out there listening to this now there are some, maybe some young people listening to this now and going like, you know, I've been caught with drugs, uh, as in drug uh, uh, addiction and abuse for two years now, three years. Oh, my son has been in this for five years. No hope, you know, no hope. And here we hear a person whose life has been turned around like yours, who has been in drugs uh, for 21 years, since 14. Uh, and then, of course, uh, by the grace of God, you uh, went uh, to uh, a, a good uh, drug rehab. And so, take us uh, through that first, uh, Pastor Ignatius, uh, you know, what you went through for 21 years and, and, and of course, you know, tell us also what your family went through uh, and, uh, and, and then uh, let's uh, also touch on uh, your time at the rehab. But let's, let's start with your young age first. All right. But at the age of 14, that's where I begin uh, my, my, my mistake in life. I would say one of the biggest mistakes I ever committed. And I thought I was smart enough to be in control. I grew up in an area called PJ Old Town, used to see Eddie, 
at the bus stop and so on. See the way that Jeff is and so on. Mm. So when I started at 14, I told myself I'm not going to be addicted, end up in straight like them, I'm going to be wise. But somehow, lo and behold, eight years after that, I I just couldn't control my addiction. I Drugs has been part and parcel of my life. Of course, it broke my having an addict in a house. One addict in house is I like help break loose. Mm. Mom came to know about my addiction when I was 15. Mm. I survived three deaths, which is uh, first, I was a uh, few months before SRP. I had my first overdose. Mm. That's when my mom came to know. Recover from that. I remember for three days she had to shower me and feed me. I couldn't even move. Wow. A phone was coming out from my mom and thank God my mom found me la, or else I would have gone that day. Mm. Somehow does that, I woke up, uh, does that frighten me? No, I still continue. We had my second overdose, I couldn't remember when. And that time I was working with a syndicate boss because uh, there is value in me. In the 80s, most of the gangsters or most of them into a white and activity, they are literally don't know English, but because being me being, uh, I mean, I know English and I, I'm helping up with the account and laundering my money, everything. So mm. there are value in me. So my boss managed to get a private doctor to stay me again. Foam, foam was coming out from my body, uh, from my mouth and body was turning purple. Uh, oh, and wow. I believe that was the second one. Does that uh, frighten me? No. Then the third one was in 97. A 93, where there was a shortage of drugs all over the world, mm. and I make another blunder in my life. And I want to say this, as I say this, I'm not encouraging anyone to do it. Mm. I attempt suicide. It was so painful back then. Heroin, heroin, uh, I mean, coming up for me, it was so painful. If those of you have been tested positive COVID-19, it was 20, 30 times those pain, body aching, wow. running nose, and so on. So I couldn't, there was a shortage of drugs throughout the Malaysia. Mm. From 10 ringgit, it got up to 1,000 ringgit per what? tube. Wow. And, uh, I think during that time, a lot of drug addicts passed away, especially those on Jeff. And me, because we, we were having the higher grade of drugs, so the pain was so so unbearable. In the end, I took, I took a knife and uh, committed suicide, mm. attempt suicide. Uh, again, my mom found me three hours later. <laughs> blood all over the room. I was sent to PPUM. Uh, so why that? Does that woke me up? No. I continue with it. Uh, and it was in 97. I mean, after that, I left my house, uh, completely cut ties with my family and so on. Mm. And in 1997, there was a recession. I lost everything. I lost my house. I lost my car, everything. And it was then that I found that uh, Life has no meaning at all. Mm. I left my syndicate. It's not easy to be involved in syndicate. Yeah. Going up to a, from, from uh, somebody, there are, no, there are nobody, you go up to the rank of second and third man in the group. It's not easy to leave them. So I make a decision. I believe this is God's wisdom because I lost everything. So I end up living on the street. Mm. For three years, I lived my life like a beggar on the street, either wow. Darling Street or Chowkit back then. And literally living a life like a beggar, eating from the balanced food or what people left behind on the table. Hardly had my shower and uh, my hair grew like pork mali. <laughs> <laughs> and <you> might, <laughs> and, uh, uh, and uh, living on street, that's how we survive. Uh, I mean, somehow or another, I survived that. Mm. Then, because I was no more under syndicate, the meaning I'm no more under protection. Mm. And on and off, I've been caught and so on. But year of 2000 to 2003, I spent my uh, I spent my next four the, the four close to four years in prison under special detention. Mm. It was a painful detention. That means uh, I'm detained in prison without terms and conditions. That means those that have been sent to prison, you know your date going up. For me, no. Mm. They know who I am. They know about my involvement, everything. And the painful part was that when my mom passed away. None of them informed me. Mm. I didn't even know about my mom's death. And till today, even though I'm clear from drugs for another 21 years, it's still a very painful I never mentioned. I didn't get to see her, pay her the last respect. Mm. 
parents came to a prison look for me, they said no such person. I see. But somehow it was in 2003, I believe that's when God uh, start, uh, I mean, it was God's timing. Mm. It was in 2002, my mom passed away, 2003, uh, there was a big fight in prison. Okay. And uh, then we were all locked up in Rome and my supply ran dry. And there was an announcement telling uh, anyone interested to go for Christian service, mm. chapel, Bible, given free. So the terms and conditions must be English speaking. You know, Bible is a demand in, uh, a big demand in prison, not because we're interested in the word, but because the quality of paper to roll tobacco to smoke. <laughs> <laughs> People read the Bible, I smoke the whole Bible. <laughs> <laughs> the Bible is in you. The Bible, is, the Bible has right. filled you, brother. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> smoke, yeah. Except for two books. Well, the, the, the preacher that came that day and start, uh, start with a sermon say, I'm going to talk to you about grace. You know, we were long in, be inside a cage and the speaker had to be a 10, 10 feet away from us. I mean, being all guys there, when we heard the word grace, first thing came to our mind was that he's talking about girl by now, grace. <laughs> <laughs> that caught our attention. But the way he break the word, till today I'm still looking for the speaker. Mm. Uh, I couldn't find him. I believe he's an angel sent by God. Wow. So we break the word grace into GRS, into God rescuing criminal every day. Mm. G-R-A-C-E. Mm. And that message stuck in my head until today. And because of that message, upon release, I went to seek help from Nation Care in 2003. Mm. That's when they sent me to Chemo Ipo. Mm. Chemo Ipo back then was a, it's a 10 acre land, one of the biggest Tamil speaking centers in the entire Malaysia. Mm. Yeah, back during my time, there were 100 over students, majority are Tamil speaking, mm. less than three Chinese. And one of the three Chinese that went in wow. 2003. And somehow, yeah, I went through the program, everything, uh, without paying. One of the centers that hardly charge, those that can afford, they need charge, those that can afford, they still take in. Wow. And uh, after after finishing everything, my pastor, we, he's not a pastor, but we address him as Pastor Jeremiah Pandian. So he asked me, why don't you use uh, your life testimony to serve, to make an impact in the life of others? Mm. So I thought, why not? I mean, for two years, I stay there without paying. Why not? I just pay. It's a payback time. Mm. I thought I'm going to stay another two years, pay them back and get even and move on in life. But somehow, God has his plan. Mm. All in from 2000, uh, I served for another four years. Until one day, my pastor said, well, send me to Bible school. Mm. And he mentioned that I took me one and a half years to decide. Because I studied in Lhasa. DJ, mm. I met my life there, and I was asking God, why there's no other Bible school? Why must you send me back to Jalan Gaste? <laughs> Not that's where I messed up my life. <laughs> I was so afraid to go there because why? If you all know about Ipoh chicken rice, mm. in the 80s, we actually burned down the shop because they don't pay protection money to us. Oh. So I think, God, why no other place? Why must you send, send me back there? Mm. So it took me another one and a half years to decide, should I go, should I not? Mm. If, what if my friends are still there and so on? Yeah. Somehow I made that decision in 2009, registered, and the place being cleaned up. Thank God they couldn't recognize me, mm. but the corner shop, that leg shop recognized me. <laughs> so they are asking me, oh, hey, are you back here pushing? I said, no, 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 I'm here to study. And they start laughing at me. <laughs> and somehow... <laughs> I, I know I left school for 25 years and uh, when I registered in 2009, it was a totally new thing to me. Right. When I studied back then, in, uh, after I complete, completed my Form 5, I did one, two years of LCCI uh, uh, account mm. and basic computer. Computer back then was door system. So mm. when I went to Bible school, they said we are using Windows. Oh, it's a new thing to me. <laughs> Uh, I, I don't know. I, I believe God has really prepared everything for me. Right. And somehow I finished my next four years there and completed with a Bachelor in Theology and all in. I stayed in a rehab for 10 years. Mm. Upon completion, my pastor released me and sent me back to KL. Mm. And I was asking him, why don't you allow me to serve another two years 
it's a payback time again. I I still I felt that I I I should I, I mean I should spend more time with the boys before coming back. Mm. He told me no no no. There's a greater need in KL. That's the reason why I'm sending you. Okay. I said he told me I send you to Bible school not because I want to tie you down to serve, mm. but because I want you to hold on to a paper and get yourself uh and 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 get yourself to serve serve in KL because there's a greater need. Mm. That's why I came back. I started working with a church in Subang. Mm. Uh, I left after three years. I felt, uh, I mean, initially, when you graduate with a bachelor in theology, the expectation that you must be a pastor in church. Mm. After three years, I felt spiritual dry. I walked out after three years. On my on the day of my birthday, I, uh, I submit my resignation and walk out of there without pay, without salary mm. for one year. Pastor, before we get there, God show me a lot. Yeah, before we get there, I I, I want to go back yeah. uh, because I've got two questions in my mind uh, to start with. Um, yeah. So <laughs> you 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 at uh, a young age, you already saw uh, that there were drug addicts, you know, at the bus stop and this and that. You you saw their life. Uh, you saw them uh, living on the streets. Uh, but yet at fourteen, uh, you still uh, tribe. Uh, and you said, of course, like many others would say, and I've heard it so many times, uh, I will not be like them. I will try this drug, but I won't get so serious. I will try this drug, but I won't go deeper, okay? So you tried and you went deeper. Uh, but the question I have for you is, why does a teenager like yourself even want to try drugs? Because it's not like your mother was not around. It's not like your father was not around. And sometimes people will say, oh, uh, they all come from broken homes only. And I think, no. Uh, yes, uh, quite a few come from broken homes, but not everybody comes from a broken home. So uh, maybe maybe for a parent out there trying to understand or a young person there trying to like, hey, maybe they are wanting to try uh, tomorrow uh, this drug. Uh, I want them to hear from you uh, what made you okay. uh, try and, and if you had... If you had a chance to go back, uh, words, uh, what would you have done, uh, uh, you know, differently? Okay, all right, great question. Yeah, actually, I came from a broken home. Okay, my dad was a gambler, womanizer, and drinker, so hardly spent time with us, and everything was okay. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, being an elder son, I start my first job as a dishwasher at the age of ten to earn money for the family and so on, but. Things became a turn, there's a turn of change. Became uh, things were changing when I moved into secondary. Mm. Being the shortest in school, skinny and so on, so I was a victim of bullying. Mm. Being bullied, and back then I, I get, I mean, if I don't pay them protection money daily, I get to get punching and kicking from them, I see. which I felt so helpless. And uh, back then we dare not stay. We want to ponting school and skip school and so on. I still go to school. And this is where one senior came, why don't you come and join us? Get yourself into a gang, you'll be protected, no one right. will come and disturb you. I, I mean, I, I, I won't talk bad about my dad. If he's around, at least I can uh, let him know what happened to me. I hardly see him around. Mm. If I can get him, get to see him five days in a month, I, that is considered a, a, a jackpot for me. Wow. So most of the time, my, my dad, I, I don't have time to even uh, uh, see him and till we passed away I didn't even have the time to sit down and talk to him like a father and son over a cup of coffee and so on mm. so this is when I made my decision to join the gang thinking I'm being protected I don't have to worry no doubt yes that, that was a yeah I mean I, I did get protected but somehow I was made to end uh, being a bully in school mm. so I was forced to go and go around protect, collecting protection money mm. protection money for the so-called dialogue. I see. They don't work, they just sit there and we have to collect. I'm talking about 1981. I'm collecting up to 1,005 per month. That's wow. big money back then. Yeah, of course. 1,005. Mm. Ah, a bowl of uh, noodle soap is only 30 cents. Right. 30 cents back then. Roti chana is only 20 cents. Mm. 1,005 is a big money. Mm. And I thought, since I joined, I have no choice. If I don't collect, I get punching from them. So things were okay after a few months when there was a call for gang fight. I was just about, about four feet tall back there. Mm. 
啊，黄世伟在 Beach Ball 边啊，都不太会讲。啊啊 ，I mean I still the shortest in the in among my 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 friends as well. But somehow when they call for gang fight, I mean in movie we see before the way they fight, these are all movie in real life. Everyone will be trembling, shaking, fearing, and so on before and after the fight. So just about half an hour before the fight. Some of them were drinking, so I saw some of my senior doing a drug jab and so on.、Mm. Some of them inhaling, and this is where one senior came and said, "Hey,、uh, come, take take a few puff. You your your fear is gone."、Mm. Then another fear, first mistake. I took. I remember I took three puff. Fear was gone, so I went there. I went to the weapon room. I chose a parang almost my height,、mm. thinking the longer the parang, the safer I am. <laughs> And during the gang fight, I got myself slashed across the chest,、mm. cut here. And during the table talk, I locked eye with someone almost my height. I believe that was his his、uh, gang first gang fight.、Mm. So when the the order to charge for to fight with one another, I we 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 ran to one another and slap. Before I can raise my parang, actually he he cut me across the chest.、Mm. And when he saw the blood, he start running. Mm. And I chase it. I don't feel any pain back then, so I was chasing him behind. I gave him back a cross、um, his back.、Mm. I throw the parang and went on. And came back after the fight. So why I got promoted, become the youth leader. <laughs> wow, youth leader among the gang, <laughs> and we were collecting protection money, even to the extent of five other schools, not just Lasa PJ, Bukit Bintang, Sota Bersama,、mm. Asunta. Uh, Darling Garden School and some girls' school.、Mm. So all in, I cover five school collecting protection money、wow. from them. That's crazy. And I thought I'm gonna be wise now not to take drugs every day, every day.、Mm. But whenever there's fight, I will I will go for the drug. Somehow, as the as the time go by, more and more fight, and I end up almost like every day taking drugs. That's where after eight years, I got addicted to it. Right. So that that is a reason, ah,、uh, for sure. With everyone who's ever gone through drug. Uh, addiction and drug abuse.、Uh, maybe not all will sound like your story, uh, but uh, I think drug does numb, right? It numbs feelings,、yes. uh, and so it, the feeling could be anything. It could be fear. It could be loneliness.、Uh, it could be、uh, anger. It could be so many things. And and and、yes. when you get introduced to something so simple.、Uh, That can immediately almost take away、uh, those negative feelings. I mean, it does sound like a very tempting offer、uh, because、uh, we Christians yeah, also yeah. have got the word. The word will tell you, yeah, you know, uh, uh, pray, trust in the Lord.、Uh, but all that takes a long time. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, a drug, you know,、uh, seems to be immediate, and that's why probably so many young people, without knowing the truth,、uh, will try it. And then realize, wow, it works.、Uh, and then, like you lah,、uh, some young people are wiser. They go like, okay, I will take it, but I won't take it so often. But somehow, after a while, you find that you are not in control, really, isn't it, Pastor Ignatius? Yes. But drugs become in control of our life. That's right. That's right.、Uh, now, can I just、uh, touch on the second question I have? Because、uh, you went to Vineyard Keeper Centre in Chemo. You just explained that it was a ten-acre piece of property,、uh, at least back then. Uh, you even mentioned、uh, the pastor's name, and you said he was not a pastor. But you know, sometimes we don't see pastor in terms of his title, lah. In terms of what he or she does to us,、uh, and、uh, that's why we respect them like that.、Uh, and、uh, in two years, you were able to kick the habit and even、uh, be trusted、uh, to serve in the same、yeah. rehab. Now,、uh, I think、yeah. you said this to me before,、uh, Pastor Ignatius, maybe about five, seven years ago when we first met, and we. Talked about、yes. uh, the the effectiveness of rehab. I want to ask you the question about what about、uh, rehab that、uh, that makes this that makes it so successful? Because I, there are many rehabs out there. Yeah,、uh, and quite a few are government rehabs,、uh, and、yeah. so on and so forth. And and even I heard many years ago because、uh, I was also involved in the care center of FGA that rehab also did a lot of good. Uh, and I remember a lot of these people that went to government rehabs、uh, once upon a time. They will come to the private ones like Care and like、uh, Vineyard and actually say,、uh, you know, 
is not working uh, in some of these other places. And actually, one of the government uh, officials uh, came to meet one of uh, the leaders uh, in the church and actually say, why is yours working so well and ours are not? In fact, I think at one, at one time, uh, they even said something like, uh, we have a 90% failure rate. Uh, yeah. And then the, 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 the ones like Care and Vineyard are probably saying, no, we have a 90% success rate. It's, it's the other way around. Now, of course, we want to attribute it to God. We want to say Jesus and we want to say the Holy Spirit. But I want you to, to share with us now, uh, what are the, some of the other areas that we might not know yeah. that uh, is, 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 is uh, important for a rehab to have for people like yourself to be able to overcome within two years. Maybe tell us some of the stories. Uh, and from those stories, we're going to draw the kind of personality or character, uh, the ingredient that a rehab needs to be able to uh, help people. So my pastor will say two years and 21 years doesn't balance. That's right. So this is where he invited me, why don't you serve as a training staff for a few years before you decide to move on. And I, I thank God for the invitation and for taking up the, 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 the invitation as well. So I start to get that. Uh, me, okay. I remember. Can you hear me? I think the light is cutting. Yes, the light is cutting, but uh, I, I think most of it we can hear yeah. you. Yeah, go ahead. All right, okay. So when he, he called me to serve as an admin, I, I remember telling him this. I mean, not a joke. Uh, to me, I said, How do I qualify to be an admin? I said, If you ask me to hold para to fight, okay, uh, yeah. if you ask me to hold a pen, which is the other opposite of me. So as I serve in the admin, I begin to understand because I, I get to interview newcomers. Right. And I get to uh, uh, see their progress and so on. And somehow I begin to see them in, out, in, out. Some In my 10 years staying there, I see some of them been in, out almost more than 10 times. <clears throat> and this is where... Uh, this is where I began to study their character and so on. Mm. But anyway, in Vinaya, we emphasize a lot of character building and discipleship training, which is very important. Right. And uh, just to go back a bit, uh, I, before I went to Vinaya, I tried everything under the sun. Mm. You all heard about Down Kertom. We've been doing that in the 80s. Doesn't work. Mm. I use uh, opium. Opium doesn't work. Then uh, I use... Uh, I mean, uh, now they call it met, uh, 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 it's the name uh, methadone, mm. right? I've been using methadone in the 90s. It doesn't work. Mm. And I even tried uh, many other things, religion and so on. If I know Mandarin, you wouldn't call me pastor today. I was in Thailand, uh, shave my head to become a monk mm. and drop uh, inside the temple itself. <laughs> so it doesn't help. I went even deeper into my addiction. Came back, I tried uh, yoga. Doesn't work. Then I try Jose De Silva mental mind control. Doesn't work. Try a lot of things. Mm. Uh, and in uh, Buddhism, they'll tell me when I was there, they asked me to do chanting because mm. I don't know Mandarin, so my chanting sounds way wilder to them. They say, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the and God was angry with you because down, you kept telling him bad words. <laughs> Right. They asked me to sit down with a lot leg cross and chant, um, empty the mic. But when I woke up, opened my eyes, it's real, the addiction and punch is there, how mm. to overcome that. Mm. And this was the same thing being told by my pastor when I went into India. He said, you need to empty yourself. The difference is, if, as you empty yourself, we feel that emptiness needs to be filled. Mm. A lot of people don't understand, or they tell, Pastor, why don't I, I don't mind paying your money, you catch my son in this time, which I don't do anymore. I can catch and put him, I'm very firm, I don't even uh, 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 tolerate serious smuggle into my rehab. Mm. There'll be a very, very severe punishment. So keeping them, because everything not there is forcing them. So when you ask them to come up from addiction, there's a big gap of emptiness, and that emptiness needs to be filled. Mm. If you don't fill it, once they go up, they won't start back again. So the different what we are doing is to empty self, be filled with the Holy Spirit. Mm. This was what I've been doing and I, I have been taught to do and so on. And this is where I, I believe one of the success comes from here. Mm. 
right? Mm. We empty ourselves, but we feel with the Holy Spirit and mm. as well as the Word. Mm. And I think uh, I completed in my 10 years that I completed reading Genesis to Revelation four times. Mm. But since I left until now, more than 10 years, <laughs> I only finished one time. <laughs> 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 so, so down there, we are, uh, all of our, uh, our rights are taken away. There's no TV, no newspaper, nothing mm. except the Bible. Mm. So I believe that was the time I make full use of all, all my free time, go into the Word mm. and be filled with it. Not just, I think, uh, not just, just to be filled with that, but to understand and, and uh, learn more about it. Mm. And I believe that the, the, the Bible that I smoke helped me a lot. <laughs> 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 Help me to digest. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but you exhale, though. You exhale also. So you, you, you might have out. Uh, so after getting high with the words of God, I don't see I need that anymore. <laughs> so uh, I, as I said, I tried everything under the sun in the lecture, nothing new. And if it was in Vineyard, I found out the root of the lecture. When you talk about the lecture, everyone gets scared. Mm. Scared is a very big word. You know? But you narrow down everything to three letters, which is sin. The root of addiction is sin. Mm. So to deal with that, we have to deal with the sins of ourselves. Right. And we have to renounce it and uh, make sure uh, renunciation, we have renounced everything. We are given a paper to renounce yearly from every of our sins. Mm. If you keep it, it's like what the Bible says, these are the little foxes that are going to take you just a matter of time. Yes. I have, I've seen in my years, I've seen, yeah, God, you deal with this, but this you don't deal. Let me, some of them, okay, I can get out of my job, but secret you don't touch. Hmm. The root of, I mean, one of the things, I'm not saying, I'm not saying every secret smoker end up addict, hmm. but secret addiction itself is, a secret smoking secret itself is an addiction. Hmm. So I'll go to them, I mean, the temple of God is within our heart. Why you need to inhale that unhealthy thing to, 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 to glorify God. Mm. And this is where I, I want to keep myself being, I, I mean, I, 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 I mean, uh, we are a lot of idol worship and so on. We used to have tangkai and so on. Mm. The, and then we thought we are carrying the temple, but come to know the Bible, hey, okay, the, 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 the temple of God is where our heart is. So if we, as a, as an idol worshiper out there, I pay so much high respect for the those idol worship. Mm. Why can't I pay respect to this God, which is so true to me? Mm. And this is where I get myself rooted in. And even with my boys today, I will tell them, keep your religion outside my gate. I'm not going to talk to you about religion. They ask me, but pastor, you are pastor. Yes, I don't talk religion. I challenge you about your relationship. Mm. You can come in and stay in my center. I can talk to you every but you, when the day you leave my center without any relationship with God, mm. I don't guarantee anything. Mm. I believe because of the over the years, in 10 years, I've seen a lot of things. I, I've never, I mean, I told myself, I've tasted everything out there in the world. Mm. Went to the top and picked up everything. Mm. I haven't tried anything that is uh, doing good to others. And uh, that, I mean, to me, every, every, every soul that comes to me, if I can... Oh, then I can say one that is a big, and it's like striking a lot free to me. Mm. And I find contentment in doing that. Mm. And as I move on today, behind me, there are a lot of people. Yeah. So I cannot afford to fall. And uh, of course, my I told my, my I mean, when I, I show my gratitude, gratefulness to my pastor, I say I owe him my life. He said, no, you want to pay me back? Send from out there and you pay me everything. So for that, I mean, who am I that you need to raise funds to send me to Bible school? Mm. Okay. By the way, I'm one of the 17 pastors we raise up from, from India. And wow. I'm proud to be one of the 17. Wow. Yeah. And to me, I want to keep that. If I, if I want to say thank you to him by words, but what by this, then I miss out. Why? I miss out the point there. That's good. To me, I want to stand firm to tell him, hey, I'm forever grateful for what you have done. Mm. Even my own father didn't do that to me. Mm. He even uh, take care of me. Who am I? We are different in color. In kid, in kid, in kid. He treat me like one of his sons. And when he say that, uh, I mean, he pray about it and see that uh, I have a calling in God. Mm. That's why he told me, go 
by all means, don't worry about money. I'm going to raise up the money. You just complete your study mm. and move on in life. And this is where I felt <clears throat> in order to, to be grateful for such a person that wants to hold me. I mean, so to, good. To, to raise it. I, I, what I can do is to show him in, in area of my action. So good. Uh, Pastor Ignatius, thank you so much for sharing that. I actually uh, wrote down a lot of points uh, on my piece of paper, uh, you know, because uh, your years and years of experience, uh, now I'm, I'm trying to summarize it into my one A4 paper here. So let me tell you what I, I wrote down. Uh. Uh, I, I wrote down a summary uh, of what makes uh, rehab center work, Okay. Uh, because this one, we can help uh, even government officers who ask, hey, mengapa, you know, rehab uh, center kamu, you know, ada success. So I, I, I think I will break it down to four things. Number one is the person or the people running it. Yeah. You have again and again and again uh, referred to this pastor and you want yeah. to thank him for all that he's done for you, but he said, don't thank me just with words, but with your life, you know, go and serve others. Uh, do the same <coughs> as uh, I have done for you. Uh, so the person, I'm sure he was a person of experience, but he was also a person of honesty. He told you, 21 years and two years cannot compare, you know. So don't uh, be uh, having uh, uh, unreasonable expectation. And I think to be honest uh, with our young people, to be honest with our families, I think you are very honest also, Pastor, when you sit down with families. Uh, you cannot, you know, they probably want you to do miracles and magic for them overnight. Uh? So I think yeah. uh, you also have learned to be honest. Come on, let me just tell you what it is, what it will take. Uh, it's, no, it's, it's, it's not a bit of roses. Uh, you know, there's no uh, overnight magic. But the people is point number one. Uh, and uh, it, it seemed like this Pastor not only... Uh, raise you up, uh, Pastor Ignatius, to be a blessing to so many now. But as you said, 70 pastors have come out of this uh, rehab. Number two, uh, the program must be really, really effective. And I wrote be beside the word program, uh, the word F-I-L-L, fill. And I love that, what you just shared. Uh, yes, we are supposed to empty ourselves from ourselves and fill ourselves with the Spirit of God. And I think a lot of these uh, programs out there, they only teach you how to empty yourself. But yeah. they never teach you to fill yourself, right? So uh, the Bible tells us that you empty yourself like that, uh, the you know, more bigger demons can come in, you know, uh, if we don't uh, get the Spirit of God to fill us. So uh, you, you said these words, and I, I wrote it down. Uh, there is a tremendous sense of emptiness when people go through this program and when they, especially when they leave the, the rehab, there's an emptiness uh, and it's, they're going to go away even worse off if they mm. don't fill themselves. And then you said the Word of God, you know, we, all our rights were taken from TV and all that, right? Because only the Word. So you fill yourself with the Word. Uh, before you fill yourself with the Word through smoking the Word, <laughs> but now you read the Word uh, and all that. So I can, I can see the, a program that's successful is a program that fills the people with something greater, better, bigger, stronger, more powerful. Number three, uh, you said personal relationship with Jesus. Uh, don't just follow this program when there are people all around you, then it's easier because everybody reads the Bible. Everybody goes for prayer meeting. But when you are gone, you are alone. And if you don't really have a personal relationship with Jesus, you know, that is powerful enough to continue to keep that change constant uh, and continuous. In fact, not only keep it, but grow it. Uh, so number three, I, I see you need a personal relationship with God, with Jesus. Number four and the final one, uh, I hear you saying many things uh, about going out there uh, to thank your pastor is to actually not thank him with words, but with deeds. And now your life is a tremendous blessing, blessing to so many hundreds, if not thousands, Pastor Ignatius. Uh, so the, the fourth point I have here is purpose. You, you must go away from that rehab with clear, strong purpose. And the greatest purpose, of course, is to serve the Lord and uh, you know, to help others as you will help. So to love your neighbour as yourself and to do unto others what you want others to do unto you.
So four things uh, uh, I caught from you, Pastor Ignatius, that makes a really good rehab. And I think parents out there that is listening to this, find a good rehab, find a good help. Uh, maybe even call people like Pastor Ignatius because he's the kind of person uh, that we need. And he, he also gives us the kind of program that fills your child or fills your life. You need that. Number three, he will lead you to Jesus, which is you, you have to have personal relationship. And finally, uh, after the help that you get from the pastor and from the rehab, you need to go away with a powerful purpose uh, and stick to it and give your life to it. Uh, I hope I'm correct, uh, Pastor Ignatius, with that four summary. Yeah, love and clear. <laughs> Amen. Praise <laughs> God. Hallelujah. Okay, Pastor Ignatius, uh, I'm going to go into our final segment uh, together because when I sit with you, uh, you always, uh, you know, the, 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 the conversation is so exciting because you're telling me about the latest drug in town. <laughs> I tell you, uh, Pastor, sometimes I look at you, I go like, hey, is this pastor trying the latest drug in town or what? How come he knows, you know? Uh, but I, I, I'm intrigued. And I tell you why I want to save the last segment for this because I want you to tell us, okay, what's the problem out there? Uh, is it because it's too accessible? Is it because drugs is no longer just your heroin? Uh, in those days, we say chasing the dragon. Uh, I mean, I'm intrigued and excited every time I... I speak to you because you are telling me about drugs in pills. How easy is it to get? You're telling me about drugs that people inject into mineral water bottle uh, 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 and the mineral water bottle is not even open, the cap. Maybe you can tell us more about that. Not even open, it's like, it's like a fresh, uh, unused mineral water bottle but somebody has injected uh, uh, drugs into that and then, you know, as you drink the water, you become a druggy yourself. I, I, you know, it's crazy. Uh, uh, so tell us the problem uh, why is it a growing thing? Uh, and tell us the drugs that are out there, Pastor Ignatius. Uh, and tell us about the, the strategies of the enemy, uh, how it's growing. You know, I tell you, I, 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 I want to give you as much time as possible. And of course, also finally tell us what is our strategy as Christian parents and as Christian leaders. Uh, okay, so yeah, we, will, we want to find out what the strategy of the enemy is so that we know our enemy and are careful, but we also want to also ourselves have a good strategy to protect ourselves and our, our loved ones. So what's the problem, uh, Pastor Ignatius? And what's, okay. what's the drug out there? Right. How do we uh, avoid it? Yeah, okay, go ahead. All right, uh, Pastor Gunner, what you mentioned just now, yeah, there was the concern of dinosaur already. They are no more using that. Right. Yeah, we, they are uh, pushing you to inject, to find them, get them uh, uh, addicted to it and so on. But generation today don't need to. They just go and get it themselves. Mm. And you ask me the access to it much, much easier compared to our time. Okay? Okay. And uh, I remember 10 years ago, I was telling, sharing this, and many don't believe me, thinking I create a story to get popularity, to get a platform to speak, and so on. I uh, Anyway, don't be surprised if you see me in a pub. Mm. Sitting down in a pub with some friends drinking. Mm. Don't be surprised you see me in a. I mean, I always walk around with my shorts and sling back here and there. Mm. If, it, if I were to put on a tie and walk around like that, most, most of the street people will only want to, don't even bother to come near me. Right. So I have to behave like one of them. And you see, uh, what I have those days uh, heroin, cocaine, or weed, it's it's no more, uh, people don't have to chase and jab anymore. Right. Because drugs is so accessible. Anyway, uh, by the way, not to frighten, uh, a lot of drug addicts are going everywhere, restaurants, everywhere, mm. publicly, without you and I knowing. I myself will not know unless I send that, that weight man into chemical test. Mm. Ten years ago, syndicate already uh, declared future drugs will be all inside weight pen. What pen? Weight Vape. Vape, vape. vape, oh my word. Yes. So the future of drugs so is in vape. It's in ready 10 yeah. years ago. And nicely they are having it at cafes and young people are yes. smoking it as if it was yes. some strawberry, and, you know. Uh, those, oh, now, now they don't play with strawberry and no more strawberry. Uh, now popcorn. Popcorn. Smell of popcorn. Oh, the smell of popcorn. Wow. Yeah. And the latest, is it, this is where getting a lot of students into it. 
And to them, they are so cool. I actually got some parents buying it for their kids. And I'm, I, I'm kind of like, don't understand why you allow your kids to do this type of thing. Mm. And to them, I actually, uh, I have a lot of them unfriend me because they felt offended when I posted things. Mm. And because what I'm doing I, on, on Facebook or media, I cut down on my, uh, uh, what I call that, mm. media, everything. Mm. Uh, I mean, when I start sharing 10 years ago, people don't believe. Right. So now syndicate are using that. I think just to go back a bit, uh, 2012, we used to have music festival in Bukit Jalil yearly. Mm. If you can Google and go back, 2012, when during the uh, music festival, six youth died. Oh, really? Within 10 minutes, uh, yeah, within 10 minutes, the concert starts. Mm. Okay? And during this type of concert, whether in Malaysia, all over the world, Australia, you name it, during any concert, Usher are there to introduce. Some of them are being used as guinea pig. Hey, it's okay. You just uh, to get yourself into music because now synthetic drugs will get you higher and get respond to music. You 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 tend to. I mean, you've been listening to the song for many time, but the moment drugs are in there, you find that hey, how come this song is so nice? What what it's do you mean by synthetic song. drugs, uh, Pasik? Maybe, maybe you can explain. Uh, okay, synthetic drugs are uh, uh, drugs like ketamine, mm. meth. Uh, our eyes and so on. So it dilute in anything, mm. even in your bowl of uh, uh, curry, curry noodle, mm. it dilute in anything. No taste, no color. You won't even know it. I myself won't even know it. But it, it causes a person to be a hyper, mm. to be uh, extra, uh, uh, what energy and so on. You respond mainly to music mm. because now music is a trend among among kids today, mm. we cannot take away their, their, their time for me. So this drug will get them responding. They, 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 they just tend, tend to feel uh, much, uh, uh, what I call it, <clears throat> they find contentment with uh, drug mixing, with uh, 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 hearing music. Mixing so this drugs uh, synthetic so drugs uh, is nothing natural one. Uh, is, 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 is produced out of what? Because like, one, uh, uh, one time people even I, say that red poison also was a drug oh, that they used, mm, right? So I'm just thinking. That was my time. That was my time. Okay. Red poison is part of chemical in uh, heroin mm. to make the uh, 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 heroin to be more effective. Mm. Okay. Now heroin are uh, considered fading off dinosaur. Mm. Hardly people want to smuggle. Right. If you look at uh, recently from last year, just to highlight, now most of things coming in northern part. Last year, February. 1.8 ton drugs were smuggled in from Perda, Kedis, wow. uh, Perda, uh, Kedah and Perdis. Wow. Okay? And about about 65 million there. And does it stop? No. Through river, through this and that. And recently, if you, I mean, if you have read the news recently, two days ago, half a ton of drugs been caught. Mm. There goes uh, supply for Chinese New Year. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. Half a ton, almost 90 million, they caught, they caught them. Wow. So it, it, it looks like sugar. It looks like a, a kind of like crystal form and so on. Mm. And it dilutes very fast into any water or what. One ever drinks it dilute. Mm. And uh, after the music festival, where after six you died, back then, uh, just came in, it, the drug was called Meow Meow. Mm. It was banned by Barack Obama in 2010 in US. Why after taking that, it was so strong and powerful that the person turned into a cannibal. I'm not sure whether the video is still around or not. Mm. Literally, the, 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 the person on drug went to attack a beggar and start eating up the flesh of oh, the face. Oh, no. Serious. That's what. So, Barack Obama banned it. Okay? And 2012, we came to Malaysia and they sent it on the youth. Six youth died within 10 minutes after taking it. But thank God, 19 of them were saved in the emergency room. So after that, uh, I mean, this is my, from my contact from the ground. So after that, Syndicate decided we're going to dilute the ground. Mm. When you dilute, we are talking more money come in. Right. If you, you get, you get uh, one ton in, more after you dilute, most probably you get another eight to 10 ton. Right. So this is where when dilute, they put it into the wave. And now it's a common thing, it's an in thing. Mm. And WIM is about, I shared that 10 years ago, 
and now a lot of people are aware drugs are inside the web, mm. right? And this is a letter just to not to, I think when parents listening here, this is where, this is uh, less than a two-month story here, yeah, mm. where I journey with someone. I, I do go uh, house-to-house counseling. Right. This is where one youth came to me. Pastor, if there's any platform, please, <coughs> please, uh, I mean, I've been doing some research on this. I haven't got much uh, info from the drug because these are new things. Sure. And the latest drugs are called juice. 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 J-U-I-C-S. Oh. The kind of fruit juice or what? Oh, juice. So because now karaoke is back to, back to uh, pop, become popular. Mm. Again, okay? in most of the shopping, you can get karaoke. I mean, under age, you are not allowed to drink. Mm. So they can drink juice. Mm. And these drugs are being added into that juice. Oh, my. And uh, from this case, the counselor, he been with it for the past two years, got addicted. Mm. But through my counseling and journey, he did my name program. So he has been clean for the past eight months. And uh, I'm still monitoring him and so on. Mm. And this is why he said, Pastor, please send a warning out there. As young as 12, 13 are uh, already. It's not as, uh, I mean, uh, 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 into this juice. Mm. Okay, it's not as addictive as uh, it used to mm. because dilute. But on long run, damage is there. Do you think that so these this youth are actually going for the juice or it, 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 are they drinking it without even knowing that there is drugs inside? Uh, I'll say at least 50% of them don't even know the right. damage of it. Then after that, they become addicted, they right? No. <clears throat> then they always want oh, to no, have that I mean, juice. Yeah, after drinking, they, they, they tend to sing better than uh, <laughs> any, any singer out there. Yeah, they, are, they, are, they, they become the fifth heavenly king, yeah. you know, mm. uh, of, of Hong Kong. Yeah, okay. Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> so this is a trend going on at, at, at the moment. Mm. And uh, I just got this info past two over my uh, Of course, not much info from the ground yet. Uh, I, I did, I did actually ask. Uh, sorry, I can't tell which area and so on. Okay, it's okay. So I asked one of it, used to be my uh, friend out there. So I asked him, why are you doing it? And he told me, uh, if I don't do it, other places are doing it. It's a business. So it's what we provide. I mean, to them, it's for the sake of business. So, uh, so far, authority have yet to know. Uh, unless it's, it's been sent for chemical test and I'm trying to get a sample of it. Mm. Hopefully, I can get someone to smuggle some sample. Right. You don't, you don't drink, though. No. Pharmacy friend to do it. Pastor, you don't no. drink, though. No. <laughs> hey, really? What kind of water you give me? Huh? A bit different like, today. <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, I can tell some effect after drinking, you won't be your normal self. You feel like your body becomes a bit heaty. Mm. You tend to be a bit more thirsty than norm. Oh, and you boy. tend to be very hyper. Uh, you yes. cannot sit still. Or the, you, 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 you keep on talking, non-stop. You find any of your friends behaving not the normal self. That means they're into that. Chances yeah. are very high. And maybe accidentally and also, right, Pastor? Thing that, uh, I mean... Maybe, maybe yeah, you, 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 I, I mean, you look, you look at, you look at your I'm friend, you look at your friend singing karaoke, and suddenly now, uh, from a terrible singer, you know, he's now, now he sounds like, you know, uh, the leader of, uh, you know, uh, co-play, and, and, and then, and then suddenly you say, hey, what's wrong with this guy? He can sing, he can, you know, he's hyper, he's all that, oh, he, maybe he say, I feel so warm, right? Uh, then you have to better, 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 yeah. better look at what drink he's drinking. Maybe he's drinking juice, you know. A person that are from, uh, if you can see it, a person change from a low esteem, become a, a opposite of it. Mm. A person that are quiet, suddenly become very daring, very bold in wow. doing things. So these are, I'm telling generally, yeah, as yeah, I sure. said, uh, uh, are not everyone. But again, the damage is not that uh, revealing yet. because yeah. still new. I, I believe this started last year. Mm. Uh, I'm still doing my research on it. Mm. I believe it started last year. Uh, they go uh, spread all over. Mm. And according to this case, uh, Johnny made it say, Pastor, actually most of the okay, can uh, we can assess. And some of the cafe. Oh. 
you know, the cafe, not that they can go, yes, give me a cappuccino special. So I, uh, some of it using that code, some of them, hey, I want a high five. Oh. So I'm not sure, different place, different code on it. So, as I say, uh, we use a lot of high five. We, we use a lot of high five mind. in church, you know, Pastor. So I think I better change. <laughs> la. I, I, you know, on Sunday, <laughs> uh, I, I come out as a chairperson and say, okay, welcome to X Church. Give each other a high five. Oh, yeah, I better change. La. I will, no wonder our people are so high, you know, so every Sunday. <laughs> I'm kidding. Okay. Different so, place using different uh, yeah. quotes on it. And now, on the right, there's a lot of cafe are serving it. Mm. just to get this uh, and uh, again I'm not sure yet but uh, since this this is the first platform that I'm speaking uh, hopefully <clears throat> uh, in this I bring some awareness yes thank Maybe you perhaps like uh, Pastor Kenneth what you say some of it have to drink they, they are drink they drank it out accident. if you right. drink that you felt that you're abnormal not, not your normal self and, and it will keep you awake in the middle of night. Mm. Morning, you'll be very restless. you find that after drinking, I mean, if you're a coffee drinker, you would be drinking after coffee, you stay up until 3, 4 in the morning. Mm. That means something is wrong with the coffee. Right. When these are added with the coffee, you, 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 you uh, actually uh, boost up everything. Mm. So you find that you're intact. What I can advise you is <clears throat> take, a, take a shower, just just turn on the shower and uh, 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 I mean if you can take cold it's better if you cannot you just stand underneath for at least 10 minutes mm. cold shower la, better get your hand dry up and go to sleep yeah cold shower the best mm. so just, this just is what we do uh, we have cold turkey yes we call it cold turkey cold the turkey. more you right, shower right. the better this is right. the only way you can get it for the okay. time being and don't try anything else all right. So I mean, uh, that's I'm good advice. New into this juice. No, it's good advice. Uh, uh, I'll tell I, I, I'll tell King up because he drinks uh, a lot of coffee. I'll be spending. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, I'll spend more time. Hopefully, I can come up with some accurate. Uh, yes, please. And yeah. I'm quite concerned because the 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 person told me as just at twelve thirteen I'm drinking it. Yeah, that's the way the enemy uh, captures a whole generation. Uh, and uh, yeah, to yeah, him, yeah, yeah. to him, of course, and 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 the enemy's uh, agents uh, is business, it's money. Uh, so actually, yeah. money to them is God. Uh, therefore, they don't have a conscience. Uh, you know, seeing uh, young people as young as you know, 10, 11, 12, getting into this, messing up their lives, they don't care. Uh, money is big, and of course, the devil has a bigger agenda. Uh, you know, which is to take as many as he can to hell. Uh, yeah. But we uh, want to see as many people come to know the Lord and be saved. And uh, so, uh, but it's very real, uh, Pastor. I, 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 you know, I know it's no joking matter. Although we try to have some humor uh, in this world that is so full of sadness, uh, but um, we are really wanting uh, to at least get um, the uh, awareness. I think I, 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 even in this show now, for one and a half hours. I don't think we can say everything, like Pastor. Uh, but uh, I think it's a good start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good platform. Uh, I want parents out there, young people to hear. Uh, you know, nothing to uh, mess around with. Uh, be alert, be aware. Uh, watch out for each other. Uh, even friends watch out for each other because sometimes it's by accident and uh, it's all about the enemy uh, being able to make it so accessible that you don't even know you're drinking it. Uh, but all, as long as you're going to be addicted to it, uh, you know, we, we joke a lot about, you know, uh, uh, nasi, biryani, ganja, or curry, ganja, uh, because uh, I think the, the effect is that we just keep wanting to go back and, you know, uh, to eat that. Uh, and of course, you know, it probably just means that that curry is very delicious. Lah. And uh, you you sleep also, you think about it, you, you work also, you think about it, and, all, and, you know, you get pulled back to the same restaurant. Uh, and that's why we joke about it being ganja, curry, ganja, uh, 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 you know, sambal ganja, uh, nasi lemak ganja, whatever, because we keep going back. And this is the thing. Uh, the real drug out there in the form of drinks and vape keeps getting you back to it, right? And you don't even know why. And this is not curry, this is not sambal, this is not nasi lemak. This is stuff that uh, is real. Uh, and I think in the days to come, yes, Pastor Ignatius, I'm sure you can agree with me, uh, it will just get even more and more accessible, uh, more and more available, 
uh, more and more normal in the sense of it's going to be in your coffee, it's going to be in your drink, it's going to be in your food, uh, it's going to be in things that you didn't even know it was going to be in uh, and it's going to get younger and younger, right, Pastor? It's going to get younger and younger yeah, yeah. and uh, if yeah. you can just captivate a whole generation, uh, you will have business for life uh, because yeah, you will keep yeah. coming back to it until they are, you know, until they're dead. So, uh, is there anything else, uh, Pastor, you'd like to say? Before we finish, I'm going to actually uh, try to get your contact uh, out there, if you don't mind, because so that people can uh, call you if they're desperate. Yeah, sure. uh, and, yeah. uh, but, but that's how we will close the show. But is there any other words you would like to uh, say in this next uh, five minutes? Because I want to uh, uh, let parents uh, know uh, and even young people, uh, what they can do uh, to beat this. So, is there anything else you would like to uh, tell us? Yeah, uh, first thing to the parents, all right? I know the, the, the challenge is very real out there in making money, giving your kids the best. But giving them the best, you can give them the latest Apple phone, Apple Watch, that doesn't satisfy them. Yes. I, I, I mean, I'm not against those kids. Trust me, I'm in school. I cover quite a number of schools, right? right? And uh, uh, I mean, yeah, you, uh, I have parents that are so busy, both husband and wife, father and mother working, mm. hardly got time with the kids. I personally have kids telling me, after, after school, life is so bored. Mm. I go back only me, my mate, and the four wall. Right. All right. And to those, yeah, I, I, I'm not saying that you must look, uh, stop making money. By all means, yes, go ahead. Mm. But your best investment is not Bitcoin out there. Your best event, investment is your kids. Yeah. Every parent today is a minister of God. Mm. The kids that, that, that God gave you, that is the investment for the future of our good news gospel. Yes. You don't invest in that, you can have the biggest bungalow. That's right. I, I personally have my uh, schoolmate, only daughter, telling me, Pastor, I have everything, car, house, you name it, bike, everything, the latest two door sports car. Mm. But I couldn't even communicate with my daughter. Mm. For years I've been working, and right now she's in a, in a, in a teen, now mid teen. I find it very hard to communicate. Every right. time we talk, there's a father there. Sure. I want to give her everything, but she's not happy with it. Mm. And there was a big gap, gap barrier there. And I'm not to frighten, we still can come back. I want you all to really spend time, know who your kids with, yes. and who they are mixing with, mm. and know that. And kids today are so fragile compared to my generation. Yes, I survived 21 years. I'm not sure whether your, your kids will survive the next five years they are, when they're into it. Because when I visited a psychiatric ward, it gripped my heart. Grip my heart because most, half of it are educated. Mm. College and uni, uni students, they are in there. Both English, some of them are just talk, talk it out. Mental, mental disorder, which we couldn't help. I'm not God. A lot of parents thinking that coming to me just because I'm saved 21 years and I can save. I'm not God. I always tell uh, parents, please don't put me same level as God. I'm just a servant of God. Amen. What I can do, I just help out. I, I believe God has preserved me from the day one when I started drunk mm. to be what I am today. It's not by accident, but He has choose me out of the thousand, well, I mean, out of the thousand or perhaps uh, millions out there, God has chosen me to do this work. It's yes. not easy work. Praise doing God. what I'm doing is a very lonely journey. Sometimes you don't get, I mean, I don't have much friends. Those who call me, they are pouring out problems. Per day, I'm getting six to uh, eight calls minimum. Every day. Per day, I'm getting, yep. So sometimes I felt, you no, know, when call come in, I always ask God, what can I do? Mm. Whenever case come in, I ask God, show me the way. And most of them, I mean, I have parents that can afford a pastor. I don't mind paying you some money. You're going to catch my son, which I don't do. Mm. I, I'm not police that I can catch uh, anyone. But before anything happens, I just want you know, to challenge parents, spend more time with them. Right. Invest That's so good. your time in them than any other thing. Not Bitcoin. You can make your money there. Yeah. But at least... Time. Do, uh, time. Time and is I so, say this so one powerful, more. precious. Mm. Yeah. 
we, we serve a God of Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. We have our personal altar, which our time we got. We have the church altar, mm. but where's your family altar? Mm. My challenge to every family there. But at least once or twice a month, a family altar. Mm. You can lead, your wife can lead, father can lead, or let your sons and daughters lead that altar, call, uh, altar meeting. That's great this advice. My ch- and it helps it, it help in, I would say so far, those that I journey with, mm-hmm. 50% of them see some changes when the family altar start coming. Awesome. And, and enemy are destroying every family because the altar is so weak. That's right. And from my experience, this book, coming from a broken family, I know what I'm talking. Fantastic. And it for, for, I hope it works for everyone. Fantastic. And secondly, for the pastor, I believe if today, no more interested in telling, in hearing message, you do this, do that, God bless you. Mm. They want the real message. Mm. I think we need to go back to, to sin, mm. redemption, and really go into deep, deep with that. Uh, and uh, kids today really need to see. I, I struggle, I struggle, as, I mean, especially in school. Kids telling me, Pastor, you can preach a good sermon, but does it apply to your life? Mm. How to make, and today kids uh, want to know, you can preach a sermon, Genesis to Revelation. What they want is, They'll come and ask me, Pastor, I heard this sermon in church. How does it apply to me? Mm. To them, I believe that's where they, they miss out the, the relationship. Yeah. So they want to look for application more than any other that's thing. Right. If, if I were to tell them, oh, God bless me like that, mm. they are not interested with that. They want to see the real thing. Mm. I'm struggling with sin. I'm struggling with gender. I can't even share with my parents. What if I share in church, will I be condemned? And uh, because I spent so more, uh, I mean, so much time in school and so on with them, they, they pour everything to me. Mm-hmm. I'm open, I, I'll tell them, I have a uh, student telling me, Master, I'm a gay, are you okay with me? I said, why not? Mm-hmm. I'm okay with it. I have lesbian coming to me, pouring out things and so on. And again, I'm not God, but again, I, I, I want to be there. Uh, and I, in my years here, I, I, I found something, the power of hearing, mm. the power of discernment mm. from God. By sharing them, spending one hour listening to them, mm. just, mm, uh, mm, yeah. And towards the end of conversation, they'll tell me, Pastor, thank, thank you for hearing me. I felt so good. good. That's great. Actually, I did I didn't say anything. What they want, parents listen here or pastor. Sometimes kids want to be they want a platform to be heard, a voice there. Yeah. That's why they are going into texting this and that. Mm-hmm. Because no one wants to listen to them. And I believe mm-hmm. just give kids some sometimes not easy, mm-hmm. knowing that they are, they are talking nonsense, we just don't go and cut in everything. Let them talk, let them pour out. Mm-hmm they might feel better or else they don't have a platform to really release whatever frustration, anger. And they always tell me this thing, but so you're from this generation, mm. you won't understand. Uh, you know what I challenge them? That's what I told my parents. And mm. today I told them, if you don't allow me to come in and reach out that, that generation gap, mm. forever the generation gap will carry on and That's carry right. on until, That's next, true. Th- until you're old. Spot on, Amen. Pastor. So good uh, to hear that uh, final bit of advice from you. Uh, I will sum- summarize it. You know, parents, uh, time is precious. It's probably the best investment you can yeah. ever make uh, in your children's life. Amen. Uh, you need to communicate and communication is not just you talking. But as Pastor Ignatius said, uh, us listening. Uh, and uh, in the time that you spend with your children, you are actually looking to fill their lives, fill their emptiness uh, so that when they are full, full of God, full of good, uh, they don't need drugs. They don't need any of these things in their lives, but uh, God. Pastors, uh, you know, we want to uh, have practical preaching, practical theology, uh, not just preaching to the mind, but to the heart. And also, pastors, we need to listen more uh, than we speak. So listening, I think I underlined it twice, uh, is a very powerful tool 
uh, in this day and age and especially for young people. Those days, you know, when we were growing up, uh, Pastor Ignatius and I are around the same age, uh, when we were growing up, uh, it was like this. Young people, be seen and not heard. Uh, and uh, all those years, uh, the problems stem out from that. We didn't know it. Uh, but today, this day and age, the young people uh, are, you know, uh, really uh, having too many options out there. Meaning, if the parents are not going to listen to me, someone's going to listen to me out there. Uh, if I'm not being filled in my home, I'm going to fill myself out there with something. So, uh, too many options, uh, too many uh, things that are so easily accessible to them today. Uh, there's just one press of the button, you know, the whole world is in the form of Google. Uh, just too much information out there, too many options, too many choices. So, uh, we need to fight back. Amen. Fight back, uh, parents Amen. and pastors. Uh, and uh, let's uh, begin uh, to win this war on drugs uh, and win our young people back for the glory of God. Now, uh, Pastor Ignatius, I know yet that you speak in churches because uh, Acts Church is very privileged to have you speaking for us almost every year. Uh, but do you speak in schools? Yes. Okay, so people can invite yes. you to schools. So teachers yeah. out there, principals, if you're listening to me now, uh, private schools, international schools, and even government schools, okay? Uh, you've already heard uh, just, I think, 5% of what uh, Pastor Ignatius had to offer. Uh, he has got so much more and he's a man who loves God loves your young people, loves you, uh, and wants to see you free, even as he has been set free himself. So, uh, why don't you invite him uh, to the school? Uh, I'm sure he, uh, Pastor Ignatius can speak in Bahasa as well, and maybe even in Mandarin, yes. uh, and all yeah. other... Uh, no, uh, no, 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 no. No, no Mandarin? Sorry, Mandarin, I cannot. Ah, <laughs> not Mandarin, <laughs> but maybe... If I know Mandarin, I'm a monk today. Ah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, or maybe, maybe Pastor Ignatius can speak Thai, you know, because he buys so many... Uh, <laughs> So many products from Thailand, yeah. huh? uh, so in the form of white powder. <laughs> 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 All right, just joking. Okay, okay. now my... my... Sorry, uh, Pastor Ken, just to go ahead. in here. Go ahead. Recently, I was invited in Taiping to speak in Barsa, mainly okay. the government school. Bagus. So, in, in the five days, I cover 12 sessions, mm. seven school, two hours per session, meaning two solid hours, uh, uh, mainly on the topic of vaping. Wow. And I see, uh, very good. Uh, uh, for years, for years, the school to uh, the door to government school has been closed yes, for me, course. especially KL and BJ. Yeah. But somehow, this has been planned before the pandemic. Four years of planning. Recently, I just did uh, last year with them uh, a roadshow, uh, and actually they asked for more, uh, but right. I couldn't because me yeah. doing alone yeah. to speak five days in seven school for. For twenty, I mean, only I spoke twenty four hours. Wow! So by the end of it, on Friday, I actually lost my voice. Oh my but word! Somehow I got feedback. I got feedback from them. Uh, I got feedback from them. Uh, a very good uh, eye sure. opener to Excellent. teachers, especially how to spot on and so on. I'm so glad that you okay. mentioned Thank that. You, yeah, so glad that you mentioned that, Pastor, because I think people need to hear that and people need to know that you do that. Uh, and uh, that you also speak in Bahasa, and the doors are opening because people are really desperate. Uh, the other thing that they are desperate about, of course, we have an organization called Linets, uh, which helps with uh, suicide prevention and mental health. Uh, that's also a, a hot topic now, and schools are opening up to us, Linets, uh, to go in. Uh, we have about uh, uh, three to four to five uh, people working for us under Linets. Uh, you are right now one person. Uh, Pastor Ignatius, so I pray for you in Jesus' name that you'll be multiplied by 10 times more, okay, uh, in a short time. Amen. Uh, Amen. Do you do training, Pastor? Because, you know, maybe people can be sent to you for training uh, to also, uh, uh, you know, facilitate. people ask me that, ah. but I, you see, uh, when it comes to drugs, uh, uh, I think, I think, I, I, I actually work alongside with ADK. Okay. And the school they are from typing was telling me this, Pastor, the reason Okay, they didn't call me pastor. I just went in without a title. Yeah. They come to me, Mr. Wong, we used to invite ADK in. But yeah. what ADK spoke, you can get it online. Right. So students shut down. Yeah. So what they want to hear is practical. I mean, I can give training, but you so far... You need to mentor uh, a few, uh, pastor. Those under me, uh, I, I try to mentor most of them to tell me, pastor, how to tell people I'm drug addict in public. I have some students that are graduated, and now into society will tell me, Pastor, you see me out there, don't mention center. So 
so they are so shameful okay. of weight. I understand. Uh, and it's not easy. My, I think uh, for the past 10 years that when I came back, some churches are not open for me yet. Okay. Some of them still treat me. When I say I'm from a uh, center, the first thing that comes to their mind, and some of them actually openly ask me, Pastor, are you HIV positive? So that's the mindset yeah, of people it's sad out la, there. It's sad. Uh, uh, it's sad. I'm okay. With, I, yeah, I, I, I journey uh, with people with HIV. Right. And it's, I, it's, I, I, it's I told loss, them la, I'm a voice for them. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, a voice yeah, for yeah. them. Is their loss? I'm okay with HIV. Yeah. 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 I, I pray that people who are so watching this a today, people, a lot yeah. of and, and they, I pray that people who are watching this today will just see the total opposite. Uh, and those of them who have the same mindset as, as you were talking about will change their mindset because our churches need this. And it's like the same thing. Like, you know, uh, one time we were talking about uh, people who had alternative lifestyle uh, and we wanted to help churches to understand. And same thing, you know, the churches were like, no, there's no such person in my church who has alternative lifestyle. And I tell you what, you know, so many of them were either under denial or they were totally uh, oblivious uh, that there were people in their church uh, under the radar, uh, under the covers, uh, who are struggling. And so now, thank God, more and more churches are realizing, wow, actually, I need this education in my church. And then comes yes. the suicide prevention and all that because suicide is also a problem even among Christian youth and now drugs. Yes. So <laughs> at least uh, churches and pastors, listen to me now. I, I talk to you as a, as a fellow pastor as well. Uh, you know, at least get our churches aware. Uh, uh, ha uh, bring in the people that know what they're talking about as an education uh, so that parents know. And, and, and maybe your church doesn't have a specific ministry for drugs uh, 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 and, and for maybe even suicide prevention, etc. Uh, but there are people out there that can help. And, and so uh, towards the end of this uh, uh, edition, uh, I, I should say this uh, 12th episode, uh, I, I want to put up one or two uh, contacts uh, uh, that you can reach uh, Pastor Ignatius. Uh, call him to your church. Uh, uh, invite him to speak. Uh, those of you who are teachers, principals, uh, headmasters, invite Pastor Ignatius. I'm telling you, you will, will not regret it. Uh, you, will, you, you will at least be educated more about it. And, 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 and be self-protected if I, if I can say that because you know after if you knowledge yeah. will help you protect uh, your loved ones and yourself and so I'm going to leave that uh, maybe I'm, go, I'm talking to the production team now production team uh, you know if you have uh, Pastor Ignatius uh, contact uh, uh, if he has a website if he has an email whatever uh, uh, when we are editing tonight uh, uh, please go ahead and put that one uh, page of his contact so that people can uh, reach him. Now, uh, Pastor, uh, that's all the time we have for today. I am so glad uh, that uh, we have spoken uh, and I hope to invite you again, okay? Uh, so stay alive, uh, 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 stay close. Uh, thank you for being such a blessing and uh, God bless you. God bless you too. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Thank you so much, Pastor. All right. Uh, this yeah. uh, brings us to the end of episode, num episode number 12 of the Chin Up uh, Show. Uh, I pray and hope that you have been blessed in every way, if not at least informed and educated. Uh, we, of course, would love to hear from you. So please, everyone, reach out to us on all major platforms and leave a comment if you can. Uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so that you can stay in touch with us and know that every time we have something on, uh, you will not miss out. Uh, give us a like if you can. Uh, this is Pastor Kenneth Chin uh, signing off from the Chin Up Show. Uh, next Thursday, uh, we will be taking a break because it's a public holiday. Uh, but uh, keep uh, staying tuned uh, and we will have even more wonderful materials in the days to come. God bless you all. Bye. If you would like to reach out to Pastor Ignatius Wong, here are his contact details. Email IGNATIUSWONG31 at gmail.com. His personal contact number plus 6012 380 7011.